Welcome to this extra special episode of Telephone Tuesdays here at This Museum Is Not Obsolete. We've been blown away by the reaction to the videos. Telephony we thought was a bit of a niche subject, but judging by the comments, loads of people are interested. It's great when you say hi. Good day, Trev. Love you too, brother. Educo Colt reckons that we could shoot a video on dry and paint and it would be awesome. That sounds like a challenge. It's been a real mix of people watching this from people who've seen this stuff for the first time to people who've worked on it their whole lives. Like Mick Coleman, who started on this stuff and is still working in the telephone industry right now. Amazing. I agree, Mick. Probably not many people who are Strouder trained still working at BT. But of course you don't have to have worked on this for 30 years to appreciate the technology and it's great that you're all getting involved and bringing your perspectives to the video. Multiple generations have watched together. O. Wesley's granddad was a technician and lit up apparently when he was shown the videos and telling them all about how the things worked and how to make a phone call. And that just warmed my cold electromechanical heart. If you remember back all the way to the first episode, we were talking about the Batinsky that allows you to plug into the exchange and spy on conversations that are happening. Well, we had lots of great stories about things that were overheard back in the day. Obviously, most of the stuff that was remembered was all the juicy gossip, like people cheating on their wives or husbands, and a couple of saucy conversations as well. Richard was having a bit of a saucy conversation with his girlfriend when a nosy people engineer popped on the line himself and said, we know what you're up to. People also liked it when we pranked Sam. Yeah, sorry mate, it had to happen. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> The ingenuity in some of the pranks that were suggested to us was uh, disturbing and uh, plenty of explosive capacitors, plenty of pretty shocking stories. See what I did there? Andy Gadget used to replace solder with a coil of wire and watch The Apprentice's confusion why it wasn't working. Glass TTY got sent looking for a box of dial tones in a room full of telephone operators. D Callan got sent to fetch some tartan paint and Gallimede went looking for a short wait. You remember the one where The Apprentice was pulling the endless amount of wire out of here? Well, Alex actually used the entire telephone to it. So he'd pull out an entire telephone, what? <laughs> Now, I don't repeat this every episode because it gets a bit boring, but I want to take this opportunity to say that I am not an expert on this stuff. Uh, I've got great respect for the people who worked with this for many, many years, and I'm learning about this along with you as we do the videos. There's no substitute for experience, and I'm really grateful when people who know about this stuff leave extra details in the comments and even correct me when I get things wrong. For example, it was fantastic to find out that we have LPBK in our audience, who is just about the world's leading expert in the history of the 81s, the long nose pliers that we did a whole episode about. And he even went to the BT archives to find out some more information about the mystery origin of their name. Keith and Howie still use theirs. David's friend had a uh, unorthodox use for them, but it does prove that they are the ultimate multi-use tool. Although Cliff did reckon that his most important tool was the one that plugged into a 13 amp socket and boiled water. I do tend to agree Cliff actually, to be fair, I do enjoy a brew myself, especially in my STD mug. A subscriber trunk dialing, what were you thinking? Remember that bloke who cut all the cables by accident? My mate John had a similar story about the early days of fibre optic. When the cables came in two kilometre lengths, it cost them 400 grand to replace it. If you haven't seen all the episodes of Telephone Tuesday, there's actually a playlist on the channel that you can go to right now and check out all of the comments there. Some of them are great, like Graham's story about an amazing dog that could predict when the telephone would ring. And also, uh, the monologue 99's mates used to make racing uniselectors. Hmm, I think we're gonna have a go at that. Really sorry if I didn't cover your comment, but your support is really appreciated. And if you want to support the museum in a different way, there is a Patreon link down in the description. Well, that concludes season one of Telephone Tuesdays. But don't you worry, we'll be back next week with more episodes of Telephone Tuesdays. I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>